When I went back in business, one of the things I quickly realized, the traditional philosophy of you got to outwork all your peers. It's not enough. I know a lot of people that work very, very hard. They make good money. I mean, if you work hard, you're not going to starve. That's for sure. But if you work hard, you, that doesn't mean you're going to make it to the top of doing great things in business. So then the second thing for me was you got to out improve your peers. Okay. So now if I outwork you and I out improve my competitors, I'm going to be able to get to the top 10% of any industry. If I outwork, out improve, I'll be in the top 10%. But then that's still not enough. So I started reading all the books. I'm like, I'm going to be obsessed. Everything's going to be about books. Everyone's going to parties. I'm reading three books. I'm reading a finance book. I'm reading a business book. I'm reading a negotiation book. I'm reading all this stuff, but that's not enough. So then third one was, okay, so I'm willing to outwork. I'm willing to out to uh, uh, improve. The third one was every time I would do business with a guy and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, you know, how did I lose to that guy? How did I lose to her? They had better strategies than you. So outwork is not enough. Out improve, you'll get into top 10% but I got to learn how to out strategize. That puts me in the top 5% of my industry if I have better strategies. Now, if you want to be in the 1% of 1%, the last one that gave me a lot of confidence, Michael, was the following. One time I'm at an event and I'm 28 years old. This girl gets on stage and she starts talking, you know, because it was a very competitive environment. She starts saying, we're going to do this. Patrick Bedivy cannot compete with us and we're better and we're this and we're that. And I'm like, okay, cool. I got up and I said, listen, I have to tell you something. You will never be able to beat us in business. And I'll explain to you why. But I'm not going to say to you today. I'll tell you in 15 years. So everybody afterwards, like, what's Patrick talking about? I'll tell you in 15 years. Is he playing a game with her? Is he the entire, the next three years I was working with them. She kept asking, what's the reason? What's the reason? What's the reason? But here's what the reason was, Michael. Outwork, out improve, out strategize. The last one is outlast. It's that simple. You know, look at you. You've outlasted your peers. All the people that you came out of your class are not living. They're not alive. You've outlasted them. And now you have a good life. You're doing what you're doing. You were able to leave the life and outlast and live. And you're doing great for yourself right now with your family, your kids, your girls, your boys. But the last one is very intimidating. Very intimidating. You can look at UFC fights. I'm a big UFC guy. And you'll watch a guy first round kicks the other guy's tail, almost beats him. But then second round, he's gassing third, fourth, fifth, and he chokes him. It's over. He loses. How did I lose to this other guy? He can outlast you. So th those basic fundamentals in the business is somebody may be watching this saying, I'm a pretty hard worker. Yeah, but you don't read books and you're not improving yourself. Yeah, I read a lot of books. Yeah, but you don't have the right strategies. Yeah, but I'm, well, I have all the right strategies. Yeah, but you haven't lasted a long time yet. You've only been doing this for six months or a year or two years. This takes a minute. Listen, the game of YouTube is very annoying. It's very hard. You'll have a lot of success. All of a sudden you'll flatline. And what am I doing wrong? What do I do with this part? And it's very, very frustrating. Business is the same way. way. Marriage is the same way. Parenting is the same way. Our health, staying in shape, diet is the same way. So if you can be patiently aggressive, that has got to be one of the most intimidating qualities of an opponent. If your opponent is more patiently aggressive than you, how, how do you beat this person? You eventually, you eventually suffocate your competitors. Why are people lazy? And I realized, based on what I studied, uh, anytime you and I are bored, we become lazy. What does this mean? If you watch a boring movie, what's the first thing that happens to us? We fall asleep. Okay? So if we live a boring life, we are lazy. If we have an exciting life, we're not lazy. For example, if an earthquake happens, all of a sudden we become very excited and there's no way we're bored. You know, when a hurricane was coming to Florida, I promise you, nobody was bored. Everybody was fired up, right? When 9-11 happened, when crisis happens, we're all of a sudden alert. So sometimes when our life is not feel like there's that one scene from the movie that you're seeing going viral on TikTok where the guy says, he shows a video about his wife. He says, when people ask me why I married my wife, and you hear this voice from the movie that says, I don't want peace. I want chaos. I want problems. <laughs> like to say, like, my wife is problematic, right? And it's funny, and it goes viral. But I realized we're so afraid of problems. I want new problems in my life. I used to be afraid of paying taxes. 
And then I'm like, you know what? Why are you so afraid of paying taxes? Maybe I want to pay $100,000 in taxes. That's a pretty cool problem. That's a new problem. I've never had that problem before. What would have happened if I'm paying a million dollars in taxes in a year? Oh my God, I want new problems. I want new issues that I have to overcome and learn to get better at. If you just are a strong character person, Mark is not going to pay you a lot. There's value in it as a friendship, as a citizen, but not value in the way you get paid. To get paid a little bit more, you need a hard skill. So what's a hard skill? Learning how to code, learning how to edit, learning how to sell, learning how to negotiate, learning how to you know, go out there and cut clips or cinematography or do whatever you're doing. There's a hard skill. So if you have strong character and you have hard skills, the market is going to pay you good eventually because those two are very, very hard to find. And the more you have people like this in a society, everybody wins. If it's in a sports team, guy comes to practice and he's a good free throw shooter and good defender. It's a good citizen. You know, if it's in a church, a person comes to church every Sunday or Saturday, they do their part, they give their tithing, and they contribute to church by going out there doing X, Y, Z. When it comes down to a sport, they got a certain hard skill they contribute. It's a good citizen. The impactful citizen at the top is two additional qualities. And this is purely from my experience. Typically, if a person has strong character and hard skills, they will always have a cap. They'll become an executive, but they'll have a cap. They'll become a director, but they'll have a cap. They'll become a good salesperson, but they'll have a cap. The ones that go to the next level where you and I remember when we walk away from them is is a complete different quality. And by the way, this is one that's for you. You're like a 10 in this area. It's soft skills. Every, Every company I go to, every organization I go to that knows how to have the tough conversations or knows how to get by tough times. There's typically somebody that has soft skills that knows how to talk to investors, that knows how to talk to executives, to low-level employees, to a director, to a partner, to lawyers, to accountants. And they know how to communicate with everybody because they have soft skills and they don't offend. They don't hurt their ego. They don't upset them. They bring people together. There is soft skills. And soft skills make for good coaches. Coaches are very good at bringing people together. They're able to deliver tough news. They're able to deliver hard news that you don't want to hear. So soft skill market pays very well. And then last but not least is you got strong character. You got hard skills. You got soft skills. And then the last one is the magical one. Almost anybody that does anything big that we read about, they've had moments in their lives where they had a paradigm shift. And a paradigm shift to me is is different for everybody. You know, I'll give you a couple of my life. So paradigm shift is... Um, you know, my parents are arguing when we're kids, my mother's a communist, my dad's an imperialist. And my mother would say, rich people are greedy. You know, that's why we don't like rich people in the family. My dad says, poor people are lazy. And I'm in the middle. I'm like, who's right? Are rich people greedy or poor people lazy? So I grew up not liking rich people. And I grew up not respecting poor people. So I'm very confused. So who do you sit there and kind of follow until I realize some poor people are poor, but they're not lazy. And some rich people are, you know, greedy, but not all of them. There's a lot of rich people that are very, most rich people became rich by giving a lot. And there's a lot of poor people that are poor, but it's not a big percentage. Some of them are poor because bad habits or they just didn't increase their market value. But I ended up being right in the middle. I remember I was 14 years old. I came home one day. And my teacher's like, you know, here's what it is to be a Democrat. Here's what it is to be a Republican. Here's what it is to be this. I came home. I said, mom, today they talk about politics. What are we? Are we Democrats or Republicans? And my mom said, you know, son, we're Democrats. I said, okay, awesome. Why are we Democrats? Because Democrats are for the poor and Republicans are for the rich. And innocently, I tell my mom, I said, you know what, mom, when I grow up, I want to be a Republican. And she says, what do you mean? I said, I want to be rich. I want to have money because I hate being poor. I didn't understand pro-life, pro-choice, second amendment. All I meant is that was a paradigm shift. I don't want to be a Democrat because I don't want to be poor. I didn't understand it's Obama, it's Trump, it's this. No, it was very innocent paradigm shift. I remember one time I'm in a family gathering in Upland and this man named Luther al Khase, he was the most successful person we had in our family, entrepreneur. He's living in this 7,200 square foot home, neighbors with Snoop Dogg. Beautiful backyard, cul-de-sac, basketball court, swimming pool, all this stuff. I'm going into his kitchen 
And he would always make food to everybody. He was friends with Al Gore. We would play pool and I would watch how he was with his kids. He just passed away two years ago. And I would watch him with his kids. And he, every time I saw him on Sunday, this is what he would do. He says, so let me ask you guys a question. What makes you think Jesus is real? Dad, don't start this again. Yeah, what makes you, maybe Jesus is fake. Well, how do you know for a fact that it's been documented everywhere? You're a Christian. Why are you starting a fight between all of us? And he would steer the pot all the time. He would always steer the pot, you know, and it's a, and then the kids, four kids would all debate loud, back and forth, back and forth. I sat there as a kid. I said, you know what? One day I'm going to have my kids debate as well, because I see what he's doing. He's making everybody sharper because they're learning how to debate with each other. We can go back and find all these special moments that we have paradigm shift. But sometimes if you have character, hard skills, soft skills, and you've plateaued in life, you almost need to intentionally create a paradigm shift for yourself to get to the next level. So when you're talking about, you know, who you hang out with and who you're accountable to, I 100% agree with that. But then I would add the other four things to it to really, if you want to take life to the next level and you've been plateaued, you got a few moves to it. And if you do it right, it's a lot of new experiences that come out of nowhere.